Welcome UC Bearcats to UC Bearcats on the Prowl, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network. As always, James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster. Mark, what have the uh, Bearcats been up to? Well, you know, another week, a few more wins for the basketball team, uh, up to number five in the country. And, and, and then we talked last time about the quality of basketball being played here in, in the city. you got Xavier at four, UC at five, and then you got Ohio State sneaking in at, uh, at number eight. So that uh, makes for some uh, pretty good basketball in about a hundred mile radius. So, but they've been playing well. Yeah, I mean that's great to see. Like, like you were saying there. I mean, just, just there's so many opportunities to see great basketball. And mm-hmm. I mean, just imagine if uh, the crosstown shootout would be around this time of year as opposed to uh, <sighs> earlier in the year with the uh, Man, would... in the top five. I mean, that would just wow. And yeah, I mean, we're we're talking. If they were to play now, it'd be like Duke, North Carolina, in, in the you know '90s, early 2000s. That slipped off a little bit here, but not much. I mean, it's still a huge rivalry. So, you, but you'd be looking at the same quality of basketball and the same kind of game. Exactly. I mean, both of those teams just so talented, so uh, so evenly uh, matched. Mm-hmm. Well, it's. Well, I was going to say what's crazy is they play two different, or you know, UC and Xavier play two totally different styles of basketball. Yeah, uh, UC relies on holding their opponents, you know, down uh, considerably. I mean, look what they did to SMU, and Xavier just relies on, hey, we're going to bomb it and score more than you guys. We don't have to really play defense, so it's uh, it's fun. Exactly, and see such a contrast, but yet. You know, both of them have a lot in common. I mean, just their intensity and their uh, their hard work out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so uh, tell us your thoughts about the uh, this road trip. I mean, it's been crazy with the uh, going to SMU and Houston. Yeah, well, the SMU game it, it was a good game, but what was really good about it is the young guys got a lot of playing time. Because what SMU was out was already without two of their top scorers. Then Shake Milton got hurt uh, in the previous game, I think. I, my timing might be off on that. And then their fourth leading scorer, who was supposed to lead the way, got hurt in warmups and couldn't participate. So SMU's going out there throwing out seven or eight players, maybe, and and all all but one of them were on scholarship. But they just didn't have they didn't have much. So you got to see a lot at the end, especially of you know, Keith Williams, Trey Scott, Elio Seme. Uh, I think Kane Broom got a lot of time towards the end just so he could get some more work. But it, it was really good for those young guys to get some time. Exactly. I mean, that's what we're going to need for the uh, the postseason is, mm-hmm. you know, those young guys be able to step up and make the difference. Right, and, and you know the UC detractors will say, "Oh, they were playing SMU at SMU," but you know, all their good guys were hurt. And actually, the commentator was driving me a little bit nuts because he's like, "I feel so bad for SMU," but it, it got guys experience who needed the experience. And you're right; it's going it's going to make them better at come tournament time. So let's see, and then of course, uh, besides. Uh... You know, the road trip, they've got the Wichita State game on Sunday. That is going to be amazing. Uh, you know, two top 20 teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And early in the season, and we talked about this early in the season and in the preseason, it, it's going to come down to UC and Wichita State. And at the time, the rankings were totally flipped. Uh, Wichita State was preseason top five, and, and UC was preseason top 20. Uh, Wichita State's hit some hard times here and had a couple rough losses, so they've they've dropped down. So the, the roles are flipped, but it's still going to be a, a great game. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Two very good teams playing, and there's a lot on the line. Now, fortunately, <laughs> UC's got enough of a lead in the AAC that a loss doesn't kill them. But in the long run, you want to win these games because of eventual tournament seeding. Exactly. I mean, right now I've heard uh, UC as high as uh, two seed, possibly mm-hmm. going into the tournament. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I saw. Uh, God, we talked about this last week, and I hate bracketology, but I still look. Uh, I think it had the four one seeds were Virginia, 
Villanova, Purdue, and, and Xavier. And then UC was the two seed in Virginia's side. I think it was the South. Uh, and then, you know, just the Ohio State was a four seed in Xavier's bracket, but that's probably going to change with them moving up the rankings. Uh, I don't know that they had beaten Purdue at the time. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see. I, I'd really like to see them keep winning and hold on to that second spot. Um, I really like the the matchups they get at that point. And we talked about it last week in the tournament. You're getting everybody's best shot, and all you got to do is go out there and win by a point. So I, I think it'll uh, uh, hopefully we can keep winning and get a good seed. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so that is the nice thing about the uh, the postseason. You know, a lot of times people you know worry about oh you got to outscore them and you got to do this and do that. But you know, UC can go out there and just you know focus on what it's great at is defense and mm-hmm. should be able to uh, take care of things. Right. Uh, you know, shut down defense. Is is key. Uh, I think Lance McAllister had had a poll, and we may have talked about this last week. I don't remember. Would you rather have your team uh, have a great offense or a great defense? And it was narrow. I think it was like fifty eight to forty two percent or something. But it was it was defense. It, it, it you have shooting slumps. Very rarely do you have defensive slumps. Exactly. Yeah, I mean defense is one of those things that you don't forget how to play defense. But you can have, you know, like you said, some offensive issues. Things can happen, you know, and then things can bounce the wrong way or just, you know, there's a lot of variables. Exactly. And when you're playing shutdown defense, it's it's tough to, to lose. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's tough to uh, just be outplayed. And what was really good, and I know I said this earlier, but – seeing those young guys go out there against SMU and play pretty darn good defense. It wasn't the caliber of when Gary Clark and Jacob Evans and Kyle Washington were in there, but it was still really good defense. So you get the young guys who are buying into the system and learning the system, and you can count on them to come in and, and spell one of those guys for a while and not lose too much on the defensive end. Exactly. And then uh, the rest of the season they got UConn, Coming to UC on the Thursday, they got uh, Tulsa coming to UC mm-hmm. on a Sunday, and then of course the last two are away at Tulane and Wichita State. So that's going to be the really interesting one is that uh, Wichita at the Wichita State. Yeah, I, I agree. Those last two games now, and uh, we did this during football, but the Tulane and the Tulsa always confuse me. But I'm pretty sure it's Tulsa who's having a surprise season right now. In the, in the conference. They're up in the third or fourth range and playing very well. That's one to watch out for, but I believe that game you said was at home. So hopefully that would be enough to carry them through. Yeah, the uh, the Tulsa's at home, yeah. 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 The two lanes the road game. Yeah, so you're right, and that should be able to carry them through, and they should be able to you know achieve and get done what they need to do to get that nice seed in the tournament, in the, in the mm-hmm. AAC tournament. And then go from there. Yeah, and gosh, that Tulane. I think don't they play at the equivalent of a high school gym? Uh, a yeah. really small little place. And last year, oh, UC went that. there. Yeah, that was the game that UC was getting destroyed and came back and won narrowly in the end of the game. We may have been interviewing Bobby Brandon that night, if I remember right. Uh, but that so that could be a tough game too. It's just you can't get caught up in the trap games. You can't get caught up in, in, you know, reading the press clippings about yourself. But, again, I'm going to go back to the defense. That's why having such a good defense is important. It very rarely does defense take an off night. Very true. So that is, yeah, that, that is UC's ace in the hole where, you know, we mentioned Xavier earlier. And like you were saying, I mean, their big thing is offense. And, you know, things can happen there. But, uh, yeah, definitely right. with, the, with the defense – uh, that's it's going to help you see in the long run. Let's mm-hmm. see. I wonder if you has got any other things going on in their sports program. I haven't and, heard much from the football team. Uh, you know, I think the signing period is over, so I think they're getting back to practice. You know, the the week long off season practice. But other than that, not much. Let's see. They got they won the swimming and diving 
AAC Championship. Nice. Uh, football, they will be announcing. Yeah, I did get an email about this uh, earlier today. They're going to be getting the uh, schedule should be coming out Tuesday from the uh, commissioner of the AAC. That'll be yeah. Good. Yeah, because I know they got uh, they got some interesting one. Oh, actually, it looks like it might have already came out. Yeah, I think it came out earlier today. Yeah, I got UCLA. But I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, Miami of Ohio. Um, is that one? Where where is that UCLA game? Is that out there? Yeah, it's out there. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So they have some normal teams: uh, Ohio Bobcats and. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Nothing too exciting, the normal schedule and all. But obviously, the big game is the whole Miami tradition, how it's going to be at Paul Brown. But we'll talk about that on another day because, yeah, that'll be fun. But, yeah, just seeing how well UC is doing, you know, being in the top 25 in the AP poll, the USA Today poll, and just looking forward to a great weekend of basketball. Yeah, we we really are kind of getting in. I know it's the tail end of the season, but this is this is a good stretch. We're going to learn a lot about them over the next few games, especially with two against Wichita State. You know, you got a Houston Houston game in there, and uh, you know Tulsa. They're they're top teams in the conference, so it'll uh, it's going to show us a lot about this team. Exactly, and I'm I'm very confident. And I'm mean, just thinking they're going to do uh, great representing the state of Cincinnati, as uh, Luke Fickle mm-hmm. would say. And uh, we're just, you know, fans definitely uh, tune in, attend the games if possible. I say if possible because they've been selling tickets like crazy. So, yep. uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Yeah. Amen. Any uh, final thoughts? No, just, uh, you know, pay attention to how they played this week and, yeah, maybe we can get some good vibes going into the big tournament. Sounds great. So for uh, James Ernst and Mark Fightmaster on the UC Bearcats on the Prowl, signing off.